Hello and welcome to the video for this one. The subject is spongy clutch pedals and how to deal with it, especially as pertains to a sealed hydraulic system like this truck has, and especially as pertains to a G56 since this truck has a G56. But there are many transmissions that utilize the sealed hydraulic system, which, which means there's no bleeder valve on it. It comes from factory sealed up and it's not really meant to be maintained really because there's no bleeder valve so how do you deal with that if you get a spongy clutch pedal what steps do you take to diagnose that that is what i'm going to go through first then the second thing i'll go through is my personal stories i've had three different situations with a spongy clutch pedal since i've owned this truck over the last three years and that'll be um that'll be it for the video so Let's start off by taking a look at what we have under the hood. So our reservoir is here. Step one would be take your cap off, look in there and see if there's brake fluid in there. If it's dry, that's your problem. Uh, mine is probably getting low or dry over time. So simply filling it up with brake fluid and then coming inside the truck and just start pumping your clutch pedal. I would do it like, if you've lost your pedal altogether, I would do it 20, 30, 40 pumps and see if your pedal comes back. If it does, then that may have been all you needed. Uh, if it doesn't come back, the next thing to do is come underneath. And on the driver's side, right here, is your slave cylinder mounted to the transmission. You would unbolt this, and then on the, the push rod, which right now is inside of the transmission, you would take a hard object and you would compress that down. And have a friend, all right, hang on. While you're down here doing that, have your buddy up top here with the lid off, you know, looking in there, he may have to hold his phone or something over this one since it's a, um, it's opaque here, but your truck may have a clear reservoir that you can actually see your fluid level. Uh, have him watch for air bubbles. And if he sees air bubbles, keep pumping, keep pumping, keep pumping. And you will uh, eventually not see air bubbles. That's when you reassemble the unit and then go out for a drive and, you know, or at least test your, test your pedal and see if you've got a firm pedal. Now, if that doesn't work, it's still possible that the hydraulics are the problem. So you got the master cylinder up here. Maybe that guy has some air in it. And there is a way to take this to, I, I think this is taking it to extremes a bit because I think at this point, I would be just replacing the hydraulic system if I, didn't get anything out of those first two steps but you could disassemble the master cylinder from the rest of the system and more or less bench bleed it you know orient the master cylinder in a way that by gravity and so forth the air escapes the master cylinder you can ensure that the master cylinder doesn't have um air in it. I don't personally don't have experience doing that, but it is something that people have tried. Um, if those first two steps didn't work for me, I would probably replace the whole unit and or start even suspecting a clutch issue that is unrelated to the hydraulics. So, but that's, those are the steps I would take. Let me, let me go through my stories now. So first, um, more recently, let's start with the recent ones. Last September, I started noticing a little bit of a squishy clutch pedal. And I thought it was all in my head that I was feeling like I had to push the pedal further to the floor than I normally would have. After about three or four weeks, this brings us into October, 2021. I came out to my truck one morning and my clutch pedal pushed basically all the way to the floor with very little resistance. So this is a healthy system here. I get pretty good resistance just pushing on two fingers here. Like there's about a half inch to an inch of uh, free trap. Then you've got a semi-firm 
for a few inches. Then you've got a very firm, very firm uh, press for the whole bottom half, at least, to bottom two thirds of the entire press. And that's going to disengage your clutch up here, roughly. This is about where it would be disengaged, about halfway through. So that's healthy. What ended up happening to me is I was pushing, you know, all the way down here to get it to engage and then eventually to the floor was not even engaging or disengaging the clutch. In fact, with the pedal all the way to the floor that day, I still had a little bit of movement. Like in gear, I still had a little bit of movement uh, of the truck, even with the pedal all the way to the floor because the clutch was still slightly engaged. So I decided, you know what? Let's go get some brake fluid. And I grabbed my brake fluid and I had some laying around and I keep some in the truck now. Right here. This is totally unnecessary to be using dot four, but it's what I had. And I decided let's fill the reservoir up and then come in here and start pumping the pedal. And lo and behold, I thought, hey, my pedal's coming back a bit. And so I'm like, well, let's fire the truck up and see if I can get the, see if we don't move anymore with the clutch pedal down. And sure enough, we did not. And I went out for a test drive. And by the time I got back from my test drive, I had a pedal that felt brand new, but good as new. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe that's all it needed. Well, fast forward to March, 2022, about four months later. I started noticing my pedal was getting soft again. So I'm thinking I have a small leak of sorts, either air infiltrating or brake fluid exiting the system, even though I don't see any visible evidence of a leak. But I think there's something there. So you got the firmness here, like maybe an inch in. Before I topped it off, the firmness would start maybe right here. You know, so about another inch, inch and a quarter further down. And you, what you would notice also is in first gear and reverse, especially if your wheels were moving in the slightest, it would be a kind of grabby, notchy, um, feel notchy in your shifter going into gear, possibly because your clutch might have been like 2% engaged, you know, not enough to move the truck, but, but somewhat so that you could feel it in the shifter, it felt weird. That happened to me a few times and I, I started suspecting things. So last week, I did the same thing. I, I came over here and I put like a, basically a shot glass worth of fluid in there. And I took the truck out for a drive because we did have enough clutch disengagement to drive the truck. And by the time I was done driving, sorry for the wind. Uh, by the time I was done driving, we were back to our good as new clutch pedal. And um, it's been about a week later and we're still good as new. So I'm thinking this is like a once every three to four months deal. And I'm okay with doing this. I worry a bit that it will get worse, but I'm okay with doing this until I get my new clutch because I am plotting to put a new clutch in this truck and with it an upgraded hydraulics that are gonna come with the clutch uh, at no additional cost. So I don't wanna swap the hydraulics out and then swap the hydraulics again when I do my clutch. So if this can get me another three or six or nine months till I get that done, then I'm glad there. Now, let's take it back to the story from October 2019 when I had a significant problem and basically lost my pedal. Now, this could have been the same issue, but what I did back then was replace the entire slave cylinder. So I do have a new slave cylinder, it's only two years old, and that seemed to fix the problem all the way up to last October. So for two years, I had no problems with my clutch pedal. It felt good as new. So yeah, um, could the slave cylinder be the one that's leaking some fluid again? Possibly. Uh, if it is, it's happening inside of the bell housing. But that's those are my stories there. Um, that it's possible that the slave cylinder replacement was not necessary and I probably should have just decided to actually top off the fluid and, and pump it up back then. But the slave cylinder was good for peace of mind. So that's the story I have for 
the um, spongy clutch pedals, particularly on the sealed systems. So I'm hoping this video provides some insight and helps you with your issue if you're dealing with that. Uh, it's definitely good just to top the reservoir off and avoid spending anything on parts and labor until you get a little bit further in your diagnostics. Do what you can that doesn't cost you much money or effort first to help diagnose the problem before you start throwing parts and, and money at the issue. So with that said, y'all have a good one. I will see you in the next video.